for, for a lot of people far away from Kashmir. So bring us back to Monday and the way that things played out. India had cut the phones in Kashmir. It sounds like that was a way to suppress this militancy, keep people from connecting with each other and organizing against India. What do we know about what's happened in Kashmir in the time since? So once the announcement was made on the floor of the parliament that this dramatic change was being done to Kashmir, we realized why all the troops had been busted into the valley in the weeks before and why the authorities had cut the internet and severed landline connections. They were worried that once the announcement was made, there would be an outburst of violence, protests, and rioting, maybe militant attacks, and the Indian government was trying to get ahead of that mm -hmm. and just put everything in place clamp down really hard on Kashmir so there could be no uh, unrest. Since then, the clampdown has remained really tight. I still can't get in touch with our journalist. I haven't spoken to him since Sunday. The information we have is that Kashmir is pretty quiet. Most people are staying indoors, inside. There's a, a curfew in place. Soldiers are everywhere. And the people there are just kind of stunned that this has happened, but they're not able to do much because it's basically illegal to move around outside. And uh, another thing that, that was surprising was how much support Modi's decision has received across the political spectrum. Opposition parties that oppose uh, Modi's government on many fronts have backed them on this because Kashmir is seen as a nationalistic issue, mm -hmm. one that stirs up feelings of patriotism, there's fears about Pakistan. So this decision has been incredibly popular. Mm -hmm. Just about all of India has been behind it, except that. I'm struck that this is popular in so much of India, even though India is a democracy. And what was done in Kashmir could not possibly be less democratic, turning off people's phones, literally depriving them of the ability to communicate. Yeah, it's, it's suppressing dissent. It's not allowing any channel of criticism. It is eliminating the voice of Kashmir when it's their fate that is being changed. So they have no say in what's happening or even allowed to react to it. Mm -hmm. That bothers some people in India. There's been intellectuals that have been very disturbed and say this is a threat to democracy, a threat to India's secular identity. There's been a, a legal challenge already filed, and there will probably be others saying that the Modi government did not have the constitutional authority to unilaterally change Kashmir's status. But the majority of Indians see Kashmir as a trouble zone, as a place for Pakistan to meddle, and they are happy that the government has taken a strong stand on what they think could be a solution to the, to the conflict. Jeffrey, as we've been talking, so many global conflicts have come to mind. China and Hong Kong, China and the Uyghurs, Israel and the Palestinians, Russia and Crimea, and kind of on. I wonder where you think Kashmir fits. Maybe it sounds like just another intractable conflict that people outside of the area just don't really need to care about. Um, I think it's different in a couple ways. I think it's an especially difficult conflict to solve because of the issues of religion, history, and identity, and just the years of bad blood. But I also think that unlike these other ones you've mentioned, not a lot of people are watching Kashmir. It's kind of like the forgotten conflict. And I think that's one reason why this has happened, that India's taken this drastic step, because nobody was really paying attention. Mm -hmm. They just kind of left this to fester. If the world had been so focused on Kashmir and its status, you're saying it would have been harder and perhaps less likely for India to have done what it did. I think there would have been more consultation and pressure on India to respect the rights of the people in Kashmir, speak to them to see what they want, and try to come up with a solution that was more consistent with India's democratic values.
said this was like a military takeover. And those usually don't win hearts and minds. Jeffrey, thank you very much. Of course, my pleasure. In a speech on Thursday, India's Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, declared that ending Kashmir's autonomy was a quote, historic decision. 